we'll, uh, we'll get underway here. Start with a quick introduction. I'm Jay Chase. I'm the planning director here in town. And you're all here to kick off our comprehensive plan update. So thank you very much for that. Uh, for a planner, this is very much the Super Bowl, so I got butterflies, and this is very exciting, so here we go. Um, so I'm just going to do a very brief introduction. We have a process that's laid out for you, Plan of Palooza, so we're very excited to introduce our consultant team, who's really going to help usher us through this public engagement process for the next three or four days, until Thursday night, we'll close up right back here, so hopefully we'll see you all again then as well. Um, so just a quick background, uh, we have the town's current comprehensive plan was adopted in 2006. Over the last 10 plus years, the town uh, has done uh, a lot of work between our comprehensive plan implementation committee, which is now our long range planning committee, and uh, staff members, town council, and residents doing a lot of updating to our zoning, policies to see that plan come to fruition. And we really see this update of the comprehensive plan standing on the shoulders of that comprehensive plan. Um, and when, about a year ago, uh, when the planning department started thinking about updating the plan, working with our long range planning committee, started thinking about new ways of looking at a comprehensive plan. And as we went through the process and received uh, proposals from a number of different um, outfits that were all very capable. Uh, TPUDC, Brian and Sandrine, and their team really rose to the top, largely because of this plan of blues and process. So, um, really, with that, I am going to turn over to them and their team, and uh, I'm going to enjoy along with the rest of you. All right, so uh, we're really excited to be back. Uh, to get started. How many people were at the kickoff that we did a few months ago? Okay, great. So we have some new people in the room. That's wonderful. Um, so as you leave uh, tonight, um, what I hope is that you'll go and, and tell people, like, hey, you know, we're working on the plan for the future of our town. Uh, can you maybe come with us and participate? Uh, so we want to fill this room on Thursday night uh, for the closing presentation. Um, and so, uh, my name is Brian Wright, I'm the principal of Town Planning and Urban Design Collaborative at TPC. Um, and we have uh, an amazing team uh, that we've assembled specifically for this project, many of whom are you know, part of our core. Uh, at the top row here, uh, Adele all here for the week except for JJ. Um, and then we also have our uh, resiliency expert, Laura, who will be coming in, I think, tomorrow. Our transportation uh, engineer, Rick Chelman, will be coming in to look at some of the transportation issues. Um, and then we have from City Explain, Matt Newcaster and Amy, uh, they're in the back. Um, and so they're also working on a return on investment um, uh, component of this project as well as some of the more technical infrastructure components. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really diverse team because it takes a lot of different disciplines to plan a town and to plan the future. Uh, but the most important uh, team member from our perspective is all of you. Um, because this is your town, and we're from away. Um, so if you haven't met Sandra before, she's actually uh, from Canada. Uh, so she came in, and uh, so she'll be speaking in her non-native language. She's, she's French-Canadian, uh, so French is normal when she speaks, but she does a great job of language, too. So. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm actually in from Nashville. Uh, Nashville, not Nashua, or anything like that. So, um, and we are fortunate enough to have the opportunity to work all over the country um, and so we get to come to these places and, and be, you know, sort of uh, the facilitators of the process to help you guys um, start to articulate and crystallize your vision for your future. So we run you through this process, uh, and then as we go through in the future, after we, after we finish the Penapalooza, we'll be going and writing and taking all the things that we learned from you and uh, formulate that into the update of the comprehensive plan. But as Jake said, building on the firm foundation of all the work that you guys have already done in your previous comprehensive plan, uh, as well as all the work that all the many, many committees that you guys have uh, been working on, too. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sandrine and let her lead us through a presentation to lay the, the groundwork and sort of create a common language that we use throughout the week. Um, and then we'll have a, a, a five-minute Q&A uh, at the end of that, and then we'll move into the table exercise and we'll reconvene at the end of that. 
then we can call as long as you guys want to call. So we're just glad to be here. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, great to see you. Uh, this is a great time out that we're hoping for more than we had at the project kickoff. So I think we might get lucky right there. So we should count. It's great to see you all. Um, so we'll run quickly to a brief presentation, um, myself and Matt a little bit, uh, and then really what we want to do tonight is get you to work uh, and get to the, the workshop portion of the evening, because we want to hear from you uh, and not talk to you all evening long. So, um, so why are we here tonight? Ryan mentioned that a little bit. We're here really to help you create your plan for your community, so uh, hence the workshop and, and all the meetings that we've had already with Project Takeoff. And, Hopefully you participated also in the Imagine the Future meetings and other board meetings that were happening through summer with staff. Uh, but we're here to, to, to hear from you. Um, and just a few things on the current vision. Uh, Jay mentioned the 26th uh, comprehensive plan, which again we are starting from and we're building on what you've already done in the past. Uh, but your current vision, which we want to reaffirm uh, as we're working through this week, just a few things here. You're one of the fastest growing community um, in the state. Uh, you want to have a robust and local economy, uh, housing for all. You want to keep and preserve all the beautiful open spaces that you already have uh, in the community. So we'll work on this vision this week with you, and we we want to hear uh, if these things still hold through or if there's anything that, else that we need to, to add to that. Um, so what is a comprehensive plan? It's a long-range document. It's a vision document that um, sets uh, guidance, policy guidance for growth and development for, for Scarborough in the next 10, 20 years. So we need you to think, put your, your thinking hat on and think about what you envision uh, Scarborough uh, might become in the future. And it also includes a lot of action items uh, for the town and for all of you to work on actually implementing uh, that, that plan, that document. And so typically, uh, and, you know, typical comp plans have sort of various chapters that are sort of topic uh, specific. But in the case of Scarborough, for this update of the comp plan, we're going to be thinking in more of a systems thinking a little bit, uh, really to get to uh, improving livability or continuing to, to um, keep Scarborough very livable and resilient future and so we're thinking a little bit more in a circular fashion and connecting uh, these various topics and issues uh, with one another. We'll be uh, finalizing and working on this a little bit more with you throughout the week. So, so far Brian has mentioned we had a project kickoff with all of you back in May. Many of you um, attended that and then there's been uh, all the Imagine the Future meetings through the summer with staff, I know there's been an all board meeting, all the committee met, uh, I believe it was last week. So there's already been a lot of discussions and we've been reviewing all the comments and all the input that you guys have been uh, providing us so far. So just a few things we've heard uh, already from all of you. Uh, I think one of the number one thing we've been hearing and seeing in those meetings is that we need to protect the open spaces that you have, protect the marsh, protect the agricultural land that you have here. Seems like that's something that you really hold true. Um, we want. We heard about creating an actual center of the community where where you can all gather. Uh, also, uh, community center. It seems like that's a big need with a pool, uh, indoor or outdoor. Uh, traffic on Route One. That's a big one, right? We all know that's an issue. Uh, we'll we'll try to think of of various ways that we can help you improve on that. Um, and then providing some better bike and ped uh, connection all throughout the town so people can walk by uh, safely, better transit options as well, uh, plan for sea level, sounds like you guys love the Eastern Trail which is awesome so we need to make sure that that is um, you know, put into, uh, let me continue to, to, to use that, uh, add some sidewalks, increase access to natural areas and so on and so forth. So this is just some of the input that we've already heard from all of you. Uh, so we continue to build on that tonight and during the week. We also heard that, uh, as I mentioned, the beaches and the marshes and the preserves and the farm are awesome. It sounds like somebody would love to have a mountain here. Uh, and uh, we'll work on that. I'm not sure we're going to be able to <laughs> make that one happen, but we'll try. We'll try our best. So Scarborough today 
Okay, just a few things that we've learned, uh, just looking at some of the data uh, that we wanted to pinpoint for you guys tonight. You guys are doing well on a lot of uh, different things. You've, uh, your unemployment rate is extremely low, lower than the state average. Your uh, commercial vacancy rate is extremely low as well, with 1.1% compared to the communities in the, in the region. Uh, it's one of the lowest. Uh, retail sales have increased tremendously over the last 10 years or so. Uh, we've also, uh, just looking at the data, seen that your population has been, in, your older population has been increasing. So uh, we need to think about how can we plan for those folks that are becoming seniors, are retiring. Uh, can we make, let's make sure that we can house them here, that they can stay in the community as they want to. You can see your median in age has been increasing over the last um, 10 years or so. Uh, most of your housing is single family residential uh, with 77%. Um, so, you know, there's a question there of potentially di diversifying. See, that was the French, and I was going to say diversifying. Um, so, diversifying your, your housing stock a little bit to really um, promote, I mean, have uh, housing available for all income, all ages, all slice of life. Um, you have a vacancy rate of about 4.7% in your residential stock today. Uh, so that that's an indicator, it's pretty low. It's an indicator that it might be a little difficult for certain people who might want to move here to actually find housing. Uh, in 2016, the median price of a home that sold was $369,000 and for a condo was three hundred two, dollars And that is higher than the median price for home sales in the county. Um, so that, again, is an indication that affordability is, is decreasing uh, here in Scarborough. Uh, so keeping in mind that 369 number of the median uh, home sale price, uh, with, considering that your median income is $83,000, that leaves a gap of about, about, about $48,000 for someone to be able to afford a home. Uh, here in Scarborough. So we'll look at how can we improve affordability a little bit here. And then if people are at 80% of median income, then that gap becomes $138,000 of missing income to be able to purchase a home here. Uh, commute to work. I don't think that's very surprising to most of you. You uh, drive alone in your car to commute to work. <laughs> Most of you do, there's a, a little bit of sharing of uh, carpooling and, and other modes, but uh, for the most part, uh, which contributes to traffic, of course, and congestion. And this is a really interesting uh, map, actually. So what this shows is that uh, if you look at the circle in the middle, it's about, about 1,600 people live and work here in Scarborough. 7,000 or so of you live in Scarborough, the commute out of the community for work. And then 12,000 or so of you of workers that work in Scarborough actually commute from elsewhere and come here to Scarborough. Um, so again, that plays with traffic and congestion, but um, really is just brings up a question for us is why can't people live and work here in Scarborough? So these are the kinds of things we're we'll looking at uh, this week, I'm trying to get answers to that. Uh, and then just something that's really interesting also that we wanted to point out is this is 10 years of residential building permits. So the peak there is actually 2000. Um, and so you know you had quite a bit of development in the late 1990s up to 2000 and then it really uh, reduced um, quite tremendously. But it's been picking up a little bit, and it sounds from planning staff that it's going to pick up again this year on the multifamily side of it. So just a few things uh, for us to think about, things we want to get you all to think about, and that we'll be uh, you know, concentrating our efforts on this week, is uh, just from a transportation perspective, you know, centuries ago we thought that Earth was the center of the universe, right? And then we realized that the sun actually is the center of our universe. Uh, so for the longest time, from a transportation standpoint, we thought that the cars was 
the center of the transportation section, but more and more we're realizing that the pedestrian is. Um, so we'll we'll start to look at transportation in a, in a, a little bit of a different way. Uh, you know, when you think of it, and every every trip begins and ends on foot. Um, so so we'll think of along those lines a little bit. And just thinking again about pedestrian vehicle speeds, we know that as speed increases, the fatality of a crash um, increases, or, or a personal injury increases with speed. So we'll definitely be looking at some of that. And we know that signs don't really work, and those are kind of interesting. Um, and really, it's all about the design of the road uh, to help with speed and safety and other issues as well. So we'll be looking at various options for you guys. We have Rick Shellman who will be coming in um, on our team. So various possibilities here that we show, you know, some shared space, multi-use paths for better bikeability, uh, and, uh, you know, sidewalks and various crossings and how we can improve your transportation system here a little bit, so time-wide. Uh, we'll also, with Laura, who's our resiliency expert, uh, she will also look at resiliency in a much broader term, in a much broader way than we think of it uh, sometimes. Uh, and re resiliency for her is really mitigating all um, sort of the array of risk. And it's, uh, and she actually had a couple of great examples that I'd love to share with you, is that um, the city of El Paso, Texas, I'm uh, actually built three um, desalination plants to deal with drought. Uh, and then they actually had an ice storm. So they were well prepared for drought, and they were not prepared for an ice storm at all. And while the, and, and think of the city of Chicago, they can deal with any major winter storm. Well, when they had a heat wave this summer or last summer, I believe, you know, over 700 people died. So they were not well prepared for that. So it's thinking of all of the different eventualities and how we can make sure that you as a community are prepared for whatever might happen. Uh, so it's really aligning all the risk planning uh, of the past um, that is really not just limited to sea level rise and flooding, like, which is what typically comes to mind in the first place. Um, so we want to just help Scarborough, we want to make sure you guys are already great community, livable, we want to make it greater, we want to help you get to the next level and make it really livable. And livability is really the sum of all these various factors that uh, improve quality of life. So for example, the built environment that is inviting and creates a walkable environment where people want to gather and, and um, enjoy the city. The natural environment we've heard for you all is very important here, preserving your marsh, the marsh and your agricultural lands and such. Um, having a, a transportation system that is convenient for all modes of transportation and really offers choices for everyone. Also, economic prosperity. You guys are doing great. We have a lot of wonderful employers here. Let's continue to add to the mix of businesses and create well-paying jobs that, that people who live here can, um, can have. Um, and then also creating some public spaces. Uh, areas of town, as we mentioned, I think we've heard, you know, already from some of you that you'd love to create a town center where people can gather. Let's make sure that we uh, provide that for all of you. Uh, that gives you that sense of community a little bit closer uh, knit. And then again, providing housing for everyone who might want to live here for all walks of life, for all income levels as well. Um, so this week, and, and we want to start have you think about some of these as well, is start to think about some design principles of how we think about our community from a built environment perspective, um, and how do we create a walkable environment. When we know that, that a pedestrian or someone will walk about a quarter mile, typically, um, to, to go from destination to destination. Um, so, uh, or, you know, creating a compact environment creating more compact areas in, in various uh, parts of town will allow you to, to, one, protect those natural resources that you love and that you want to protect, but also will help create that walkable environment. And then having a mixed city of uses 
uh, where you can think about it, you can park your car once and go to a restaurant, go to the shop, you might live right close by, uh, you can do a variety of, of activities all at once. And then having a diverse uh, community as well, or a neighborhood area where there is really a mix of housing types, again, as I mentioned, for all income and all ages uh, of life and just all types of people that have the opportunity to live here if they choose to. And so that was kind of the sexy, fun stuff. Now I'm going to turn it to math for the, I'm not going to call it boring, but it's actually really interesting.
then this week we want to interact with you all um, in terms of the services you provide and what you demand and those kind of things uh, so that we can really do a good um, quantitative analysis of sort of what is that return on investment? What is this going to cost us? And what are we going to get? Not boring, so. <laughs> I was going to say, I was only kidding. It's actually not boring at all, and I find it fascinating because that's the kind of stuff that I know nothing about and can't quite do. Um, so, But it, it grounds uh, everything that we do in the planning realm and the creative things that we dream up, it grounds that into reality. So I think you'll find it fascinating on Thursday, so don't miss that and get your neighbors to come with you as well. Um, all right, so we're going to... Stop talking in just a minute here. Uh, I just want to run through quickly just a schedule for the week. Uh, so again, we, we kick this off tonight and we're here until Thursday night. Um, I wanted to mention the Community Quilt Project, which is a really awesome idea that the town had. When you walked in, hopefully you grabbed one of these sheets here. There's a little square. You, we ask you to draw what you envision, right, for Scarborough, and bring that into the studio space uh, in the next couple of days, or Thursday, bring that in and we'll, we'll uh, sort of glue them all together and make a big community quilt, so that'll be fantastic. So make sure you grab one of those, get your little grandchildren or your own kids to do that, or do it yourself. Uh, we'd love to, to have you participate in that, it'll be really fun to see. Um, and briefly, just the, the schedule for the week. Uh, hopefully you'll grab the schedule. I think we have paper copies for you. Uh, but tomorrow, all day, we have technical meetings on various topics. So join us for any of that, for all of them, for none of them, whatever. If you can't make that because it's during the day, no problem. The studio is open. And the studio is above Scarborough Grounds, across from Town Hall, right? Right on Route 1. Easy to get to. Parking available. Um, and you have time there for open studio, so you can come in and talk to any of us anytime. So feel free to do that when it's convenient for you. We're open until 9.30, I mean 9 o'clock at night, except for Thursday, because we need to get some, some stuff done before the big show on Thursday night. Um, and then Thursday again, here at 6.30, will be the closing presentation. So don't miss that and bring your friends and your neighbors. Uh, and we'll also have some new tools online. So if anybody is not available to come tonight or they can't make it in person to the studio, we'll have a very similar exercise online and what you guys are going to be doing here in person tonight. So feel free to tell people that they can go online and do that from the comfort of their couch. Thanks for not staying home tonight and being here for, with us. Um, and before we get you to work, we wanted just to take five minutes really quickly in case you all have any burning questions that we need to answer on what you've heard on and I'll explain what we're doing in just a minute if that's your question. No? Wow. Okay. We can go back after too and have some questions later if you if you want to. Alright, so some ground rules for tonight. Um, we'll get you First of all, you all have a number on your name tag. So take a look at your name tag. You see all the, the, num the tables are all numbered, so get to your table once in a minute, uh, once I'm, I'm done. <laughs> uh, and just make sure that everybody gets a chance to talk, one person talks at a time, just respect everybody's opinion and ideas, and there are no wrong, there are no ideas too big or too small. And, I wish I had time, but I would tell you a little story. In Burlington, Vermont, the craziest idea when we did a plan for them for their downtown that everybody thought would never happen is actually a 270 million redevelopment of their downtown mall right now. So, dream big. You never know what can happen. Go crazy if you want to. Uh, so once you get to the table, meet your meet your neighbors, your colleagues, introduce yourselves quickly. Uh, and then we have a, it's kind of a dot exercise. So green dots are for places you love. Blue, places that present opportunities for something to happen. And red is like places that really need a lot of help um, and a lot of improvements. So use the dots, use markers. There are markers on the table. You can write, you know, if you put a dot, tell us what the dot means, kind of write next to it what it is. And we have three maps for you to work on. We have a town-wide 
map, and then we're also looking at two different growth areas. So in the old comp plan in 2006, you guys identified different growth areas around the community. And to help us sort of uh, show how some of those design principles that we talked about earlier can actually manifest themselves on the ground, uh, we'll be doing some work this week on Dunstan and Oak Hill. Um, so this is Oak Hill, this is where we are right now. Uh, so we'll be doing some work and seeing how things could have been done differently, how we could um, improve walkability and maybe create a town center here in Oak Hill. Who knows, so we want you to think about some of these things. And we'll uh, look at Dunstan also. Um, so again, this is just an exercise to help us figure out how these the guiding principles, these design principles might be um, sort of brought to life uh, on the ground. And then you guys can do that for other growth centers that you've identified in the communities as well. Uh, but this week we'll do, we'll do these two areas. Uh, and then once we're done, we'll report back. Uh, we will want to hear from all of the tables, your three biggest ideas. Uh, so we're going to time you guys. We're going to tell you when to switch maps, because you've got three maps on each table. Um, and um, So we have about 15 to 20 minutes, 15 minutes per map. But we'll tell you when to, when to switch around. So if you wouldn't mind, just um, please go over to your tables, and we'll have staff and uh, members of our team will come around also um, and help facilitate.
have that become sort of a community town center. And it's in between Oak Hill and Dunstan. And it has access from the turnpike, et cetera. So that was one thought we were talking about. And we also thought that it would be really nice to try to get through Route 1 somehow. It gets so congested with traffic. And again, as you were saying, uh, there's really a lack of safe walkways. And so. And we were starting to work on number three, but we didn't really get to <laughs>
So that may be what it takes to get them off the Route 1 area and get them out of going down through, through what is now the center of our town. Um, in terms of the Scarborough Downs area, we, we agree that that presents the best opportunity for any type of a community area, town center, call it what you want, for us at this point in time because if we can alleviate the traffic on Route 1, we're never going to make it successful. So in order to have that nice, lack of a better word, maybe downtown area, town center area, that is the area that presents itself the best choice. Um, one of the other thoughts that we had is that if we can't do that in anywhere near in the near future and we might want to do something with a community center, we thought that a good area that we could put that right here, right now, would be across from the library where the ice rink was once proposed. There's plenty of parking, there's a lot of walkability, um, there's very little traffic, if you will, that flows on the road that goes up to the high school and then down to the park area, so that we can make that very, very walkable for seniors, teens, etc. and there's, again, there's plenty of parking in that area. So those are the three that we have. Oh, that Easter Village, right, connecting up towards uh, the street. Is that 
Ward Street and then uh, have some uh, ability to uh, walk to the businesses there. So we thought that would be a fantastic thing. We'll look at a, a fairly small project as far as uh, compared to the other things that we have going on. Um, along with that, just uh, bike lanes, walking paths, and stuff like that along the main roads there. We've noticed that uh, people running along the roads and stuff, it just becomes uh, quite the hazard. So, and we have all these beautiful parks, but we have, we have to drive to get to them. So it would be really nice to be able to walk or bike to actually get to the parks. Uh, the town center, the community center, yes, the community center. Uh, we talked about uh, the same area by Scar Road Downs. And we also uh, thought that there might be a potential uh, cross street from the library where the uh, basketball court and tennis courts are. Maybe relocating those someplace. So um, that looked like uh, some good areas to go. And uh, the other thing that we had was the uh, a facelift on a lot of the businesses off the long route one. There are some nice looking businesses, but there's some that uh, looks like it's, it's been about 30 years since they done anything to the front of the business and so got a little bit more uh, curve appeal with I guess uh, and a little bit better uh, be a little more attractive. And most importantly a new public safety building. Yes a public safety building. Yeah.
guys go, um, and I think we're over on time. So anybody who wants to or needs to go, that's fine. We won't talk about you when you leave. So you're welcome to. But um, I've got a few questions. Um, so I want to do reverse or reverse Q and A. Um, and if you have any questions for us as well, that any of these things that made you think of, uh, that'd be great. But if you saw me tapping on my phone or whatever, I wasn't just playing Angry Birds or something. I was actually taking notes. So. Um, Oh yeah, before you go to um, Thursday is the closing presentation at 6.30, 6.30 here. right here. Um, so, you guys, uh, several of you mentioned uh, Scarborough Downs and even that the, the town should be responsible for making that happen and be in charge of it or you know, you know, even buy it or whatnot. Um, now, this may be something I'm sort of getting out of, out of my depth on and this is more of a, about something that Matt might talk about in the future, but is that something that you'd be willing to pay for as a community? You know, I, when we work in New England a lot, we find that, um, you know, it's not necessarily, like, you guys aren't dying to go buy stuff and pay, you know, pay for stuff. It's a very brutal community. Uh, so, uh, is that, is, is there any discussion around, um, you know, kind of the town's involvement in that and sort of the financial responsibility? Anybody want to take that on? Yes? I think you'd save money. I think you'd save money because if you let it develop into like single family houses or apartments, you're going to increase the low level schools, and then we're going to uh, cost over 13000 per student to educate them. If you have that as public property, it's a lot less resources than it would be in the tax so there might be an overall cost savings if it's public property, um, but what if it's a uh, you know town managed development, or if the town did some sort of a you know RFT process where a development would could occur, but on the town's terms? I guess I would say that you know we need to do something like that where the town has more control because I fear that we'll see something like a Higgins Parkway. We've got all these little individual developers trying to sell pieces of property, and that doesn't seem to move forward at all. And there has to be, you know, as you talked about earlier, the return on investment. We have to be able to convince folks that, you know, if we buy this down the road, this is going to be investment. It is going to require investment in the future, but what is the long-term return on investment for the growth and success of this community? And that's why I think the town has to have a little bit more input to that process. Thank you. I think, I think too, you look at that parcel on a map and you don't know what the topography lot of that space that is wetland, so that's something that we consider certainly. I certainly agree with that. Uh, when, when I look at Scott uh, uh, Downs, I think in terms of a development something like Reston, Virginia. Uh, I lived at, down in Virginia as Reston, uh, Reston was developing, and I lived in Reston when it was finishing up as a development. Uh, and it was owned by basically a homeowners association of 65,000 people. Uh, and it was built with very careful attention to the mix of housing, the mix of population that was going to be there, both the schools, the small centers. Every small village center had some sort of a community center attached to it and some sort of a, an area for senior citizens. And it was carefully thought out. And it took them about almost 40 years to build up. And I think Scarborough, the Scarborough Grounds area, it, it's a long-term investment. It's going to take a long time and a careful time to build it out. But 20 years from now, we don't want people in uh, the young lady who was here hey, helping before. We don't want her saying, boy, I wish 20 years ago the town of Scarborough had the vision to get that property and really make it the gem of the center of Scarborough. Uh, well, this is a hot topic. This is great. So if we, could, if we could do things that meant that we'd be bringing money in. I mean, art um, has had a, a big opportunity in, in our town about about a possible civic center, you know, something that's either performing arts or something that's going to bring in performers, whether it's, uh, you know, basketball teams and hockey teams and think, you know, 
figure about how to make it a place where we would get money. And like you, Rachel, I, you know, I was in Burlington, Vermont last week, and um, you know, over in Europe last fall, and just saw these areas where towns have opened the street and blocked it off so that they have shops and restaurants and there's businesses all along and it's a wide walking area so that you could just go around. Something that would bring money in. Very fortunate. 
very big, very fortunate to have a lot already there if we historically take a look at what's there. Yeah, great. The trail, which is shortened but that's the north-south, but what about the east-west connectivity? But the point that was brought up at our table, and maybe this is just bigger than Scarborough, and it's something we maybe need to study in this process, is how many people drive through Scarborough or Route 1 on either Pleasant Hill or Black Point Road as they're, or Route 1, as they're trying to go to South Portland or to Cape Elizabeth? Do we know it? Is that part of our, is that a big part of our traffic? It's not been easy to get to South Portland or to, to Cape Elizabeth. If you're coming from South, you've got to go up Route 1 and you've got to take one of those connectors. And to what extent can we find ways working through the state and these other communities do some of the traffic coming through Scarborough and to connect to those important communities here. I think part of what we're talking about is, you know, on the sidewalks we have, we have sidewalks, but it's an uncomfortable sidewalk when you have traffic zipping along beside you. So there, there are sidewalks that don't feel safe, probably, for any of us as adults. So making sure that we can have sidewalks that feel comfortable, that have a broad way, and then making sure to figure out where is this traffic. You talk about people coming into Scarborough, working, but how about people coming through Scarborough to get to Portland and to South Portland and Cape Elizabeth? I think that's information I don't know if we have that, the cars that come through our city. That's a great point. We're actually working in, uh, in Yarmouth uh, doing a zoning ordinance and plan for Route 1. And one of the things that um, we you know, immediately talked about was, you know, we're really tired of our Route 1 being just a pass-through from here to there. And, you know, some discussion became, well, why would anyone stop? Have you seen your Route 1 lately? You know, and that's the, and they're like, yeah, it's kind of, and you think about all the different places along Route 1 that are clearly destinations. No one's just driving through some of these other places because people are actually going there for vacation and stuff. And so, and then, you know, one table said, we think maybe Route 1 is too far gone. We can't do anything about it. And in Yarmouth, one of the, like, the whole exercise was a, a, a you know, corridor plan for how to transform their Route 1 to make it a special Route 1. It's not going to be the historic, it's not going to be Main Street, and then, you know, we'll probably be more auto-oriented than some of these other historic places are where Route 1 is, you know, this fantastic street through their historic little village. Um, but it can certainly uh, be transformed through planning and visioning and all of that stuff. So we can, that's something that's important to you guys, we can talk about that through the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even when we're talking about the walking paths that appear behind the schools, we have a lot of those that it's unclear if they're on private property, some of them might be owned, um, you know, just by the town, but they're not maintained in the winter. And I was in a meeting last week trying to find efficiencies in our bus routes, and when we were looking at the map like this, around the schools, we could eliminate the cost of some buses, you know, uh, school buses, because if we can have kids walk from you know behind Pleasant Hill School, that whole neighborhood would be almost within a walking distance that's within our school policy. Same around um, the main campus of the schools. If we could just open up a maintained walkway that's cleared in the winter and um, isn't in somebody's backyard, that saves us money in transportation costs for the school. So it's definitely something we should look into. Yeah, I had a couple of thoughts. We've talked a lot about walkability, and God knows I love winter. In fact, I prefer <laughs> the summer, but walking is a difficult prospect come January for many, many people. Um, I think we need to keep it. I mean, the town is huge. When we first moved here about five years ago, I didn't realize Scarborough was a town. I just thought that was a placeholder for a whole bunch of smaller villages. Um, it's a huge town, and I think we need... And, Everything is designed for the automobile, but we'd love to get away from it now. Um, so perhaps we need to think as well about mass transit, um, picking up some of the load, moving people from one area to the next. It would, it's feasibility, the cost is always a problem because gas is so cheap, it just makes no sense. Or you can't, it's not economically feasible to run. We used to have trolleys that ran everywhere, they're now gone. So I, I think we need to think about mechanisms of mass transit as well. Yeah, we've heard that you guys are super hardier under them. You like and you'll actually walk in the winter, or at least maybe snowshoe or cross country ski. So we until we get clipped by the snow. Uh, so in terms of decreasing traffic, I don't 
work in Scarborough, so when I'm getting in my car in Scarborough to go somewhere else in Scarborough, a large percentage of the time it's because I'm going to the grocery store. And so if we had neighborhood corner stores where you could get milk and bread and you could walk or bike to those places, I think it would decrease quite a bit of traffic potentially. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and that, that's a great idea. It's kind of going back to the way they used to do things. It's tricky for those kind of places to survive economically these days, but we think about all the different sorts of things we subsidize as a community, you know, to you know, building wider roads to alleviate some of the traffic and all those kind of things. You know, maybe you get creative and out of the box and you start thinking, well, instead of adding a new lane, you're going to add a corner store as part of a town initiative, which you know, may be the first time in the country so it's done that. Um, okay, um, I have a couple more here, so thank you. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying for the time, but um, so let's see, important ones. Um, do you want more people here? Right? And so we come to these, you know, cool little small towns or places. I don't know if you guys think of yourself as a small town, but you know, you have that sort of charm and character. Um, but we also talk about, you know, sort of the economic prosperity and, you know, sort of, you know, transformation or creating centers or, you know, there's types of things and those types of things. Um, tend to take people, you know, to, to make it happen. And so like when we're working in uh, this workplace, like in uh, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, you know, fantastically historic, beautiful downtown, everybody loves it. Uh, and, and, you know, the locals are bemoaning all the tourists who come there. And, you know, then we sort of have a discussion about like, I, I get it, you know, um, it'd be grateful to the locals, but if there were only locals, you wouldn't have this downtown. Like the tourists are supporting your great, all the things that you love. And so it's kind of this love, hate, kind of thing you have to come to terms with. And so um, are you, you know, as we think about these big ideas, civic centers, community centers, you know, bringing people in uh, for various things, are, are you okay with having more people here? Are you guys sort of like the number of people who are here now and you're trying to close the gates? <coughs> Not that we could if we say yes, but just so you know, just curious, that sort of mindset. Yeah, how many of you have run away? Thank you, that's a great question. Raise your hands high, raise your hands high. Who, who's from here, born and raised? Scarborough. Scarborough. Scarborough, born and raised. All right. Okay, so there we go. So we've got two, maybe. Okay, a three. So, um, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Um, Does it count? I came at nine. Nine years, that counts. Nine year olds count. Uh, so, uh, but, okay, all right. So, I did that. Anybody, uh, anybody have any, uh, any specific concern about growth? I haven't heard any fears. Like you guys are like so like an easy crowd here. Like I want to hear somebody like really scared or concerned about something. I I have a 97 unit uh, development being uh, being built by my home. It concerns me because it's uh, it's buildings that are on postage stamp lots and it's displacing a lot of wildlife. But I have to also look at the fact that it's a growth area that was designated by the comprehensive plan, and I'm kind of learning that the wish didn't happen. Yeah. So a new development near her house that she's got concerns about. So we had a, a meeting actually uh, about a week ago, I guess, mm -hmm. and I made this comment, then I'll make it again, but growth is inevitable. We're not going to stop it you may be able to slow it down. But I think the key is that the growth that does occur needs to occur without changing the character of our town. So we don't want it to get away from us. We need to be able to control it uh, because, again, you can't, you can't stop it. So character is important. Again, I'm, I'm a relatively new person here, and I would, I would phrase, say, phrase the question differently. I think one of the things that disturb me the most is the change in the average age of citizens in Scarborough. I would like to see that if there's going to be growth, we can attract um, younger professionals that want to be here, because they may be the ones who subsequently develop their families here. They don't have any experience in Scarborough, they're not going to know to move to Scarborough. And, I don't have children, and I don't know if many of the folks around here would like that. It, their children would actually stay in the Scarborough area instead of going to other communities. So I guess one of the things I would think about is sort of how do we attract individuals across all age groups 
but they still have some quality of life. We can grow businesses through the creativity of some younger people. We have a very wide collection of universities around here. And we should make every effort to try to attract these individuals while they're either in school here or when they start off doing their careers and have housing options for these professionals or others that want to maybe not be in downtown Portland but want to be other places. And then they make some good leave when they have their families come and move here and be part of our community long term. Yeah, so what we see in a lot of, of New England communities is, you know, the people are aging here and there's not a lot of people who are moving in that are younger and not, not a lot of new kids. And so you, you look at the statistics here, you actually see a sort of negative trend for the younger um, age cohorts. And so, um, you know, I, I worry that some of these towns are, you know, at risk of going extinct at some point. You know, you literally just sort of run out of people because no new people are coming. So, um, with that said, you guys are a really, you know, wonderful place. You have all these natural amenities. You have the charm of, of, uh, of the, the neighborhoods and things. Um, you mentioned maintaining the character is important as growth and inevitable growth happens. And so, my question is then, as we go through this week, for us to talk about more, we don't have to do it tonight. Uh, which character do we mean? Because you have two. You have the historic character of the original sort of neighborhoods or villages, if you will. And then you have the character of all the things that came after that, which is the suburban sort of 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, back to the auto-oriented component of it, the suburban sort of, um, you know, a lot of people talk about suburban sprawl. And, and you know, you guys have your, your topography, your, your hydrology that's curtailed a lot of that. Uh, and so you've grown where you can. But when you look at some of these areas, it's very focused on this sort of new type. And so when you say that character, what I want us to be more specific about is which character do we mean? Is character more of a, a, a massing, a size, a height, a, a space between the buildings? Uh, or is character more about, you know, wonderful neighborhood scale streets? Uh, or is it more about, you know, we've got um, all of the suburban, um, you know, commercial uses with parking lots and we have you know, plenty of parking and, and those sorts of things. And so think about that as we go through this process of what character you guys are worried about protecting. Um, and the last thing I want to, to say or have you guys think about is um, because, you know, one of the first things we said is you guys are doing really good in a lot of different sort of criteria if you look at some of the statistics. Um, and I don't hear from you guys what I hear in a lot of communities. I have to drag out of you uh, complaints and concerns and fears and things like that, right? I had to specifically ask you. A lot of communities, that's the first thing they go to. They're like, well, let me tell you, we've got to fix this, and whatever you do, don't do that, and all these things, here. Right? And so, Those people I don't stay hear home that. tonight. What? Those people stay home They stay tonight. home. Okay, well, hopefully this will be broadcast, and they'll, they'll come out and share their concerns with us. Usually they're the first ones to show up, the, the people who are, you know, mad about something. Um, so what I'll say is I'll, I'll take uh, for granted and until you guys um, uh, correct me about this, that this is a good community, right? Yeah. This is everybody likes this place, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Right. So the problem is that good is the enemy of great, right? So how do we go from good to great? And what does great mean to you guys? And maybe we'll say, well, we're already great. We're already to that point. We want to go from great to amazing, right? And so as we go through this week, let's think about what that means. Guys, what's the next iteration, the next level? What is that? We're protecting character, but we're getting even better in the following ways. And so I don't want to see you guys have you know any sort of complacency that like we're doing pretty good, so let's just keep on like we're doing. Because growth is inevitable, things will change and things will occur here. And it's up to you through this process, and for those who aren't here tonight, also, it's up to them through this process if they want to come and participate, that um, you know, we're planning the future right now, right? So we've got to go through this process together and come up with, you know, the amazing plan for the future of Scarborough. So um, I'm not sure, uh, I think um, team, team um, Big Thinkers won the, the prize uh, for uh, the most marks uh, on the map. If they at least gave themselves a team name, so that counts for something. Um, so that means you guys each get a free bag of chips. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so with that, I'll let you guys all go home. Um, thank you so much for coming out tonight.